Okay, uh, Nicola, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, let's take a look at what you got here. Okay, where'd it go? All right, there it is. Uh, so this is the one you showed, but there's another one up here at the top. This one would be a lot more complicated because here we would have an image that clearly would have to be put in as the background of that section, possibly even the background of the page. You could do it that way. And then we'd have to do, hmm, I'd have to take a look at this here because what we may have to do is create this outside of here and then insert it into it. Uh, but that's not the one you were asking about. The easy one is down here. So let's take a look at two different ways I put that together. And the first one here is, let me just come in and let me get rid of all the CSS and then we'll turn it back on. So we'll just take that out and that out and that's it for it. So we'll come back in, come on. Um, all right, so we just have a two column row. We have the image that I plunked in over here on the left and in that image, and this is running slow today. Um, so we just put that image in there and the only thing I did was I floated it to the right. I didn't set the size or anything. So you have to determine what size you want, even though it looked just fine. Then over here, I just made this a text element. So you can make it a text element. You'd have to uh, give the text itself a hyperlink and uh, set the background color. Gave it a top margin of 100 just to get it down into the middle. And then under advanced, let me see here. No shadow, I took out any corners if there were any, and I put 20 pixels of padding all the way around it just to make it a little bit bigger. And then I just put in the text and an arrow here at the end that's all part of the text. So with hers, I think her arrow was much, much bigger. So you could put that in. That's another bit of work. You would have to use a pseudo element to do that, but that could be done. And so then all I did was I, I think I shrunk down this column a little bit sorry, this row. Yeah, I shrunk down the row to 70% 70, 70 in width. And then what I did is all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, take this here and do margin left of minus 80 pixels, which is going to push it over this way. The problem is when it pushes it over that way, let me slide this up and then I will open up my magic CSS box here and we will shrink this down you'll have to click on settings and then CSS to do this. So let's just put in our margin left. And so it pulls it over, but you can see here, the text now is proud of that image. So whatever comes second, whatever comes below, um, usually wants to push up over the top of what you have above it. So what I did is I said, take this, this text element and give it a Z index of minus one. So Z would be front to back, X is, right, left, Y is up and down, Z is front to back. So it says minus one, which means push it behind the other element. Because most elements in here are all gonna be set to a Z index of one. So if you say minus one, it'll say, okay, push it behind the existing element. So that's one way to do it. But you're using a text element. And also on mobile, this is going to stack one on top of the other. So now there's a second way of doing this. And I will turn all of this off again as well. <clears throat> Just by putting a little slash in front of the CSS, it'll kill that line of the CSS. So let's see what we have here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what I did here is I just created a single column row and I put in a text or the image element. And again, I floated that image element to the right. Then below that, I put in the, um, I put in a button this time. So let's open up that button. And one nice thing about the button, besides the fact that we have the, well, come on, open up. Uh, besides the fact that we have the icon we can put at the end, the icon's a lot easier to target if you want to make that a lot bigger. So that can easily be targeted with CSS, whereas the other up top here I said would involve the uh, pseudo element. So I put in the text there. I changed the background color. I got a font size of 14. I did like the same up here at the top. And then we have... You could do fluid or fill, doesn't matter. Um, display block or display inline, doesn't matter. But we got vertical space and horizontal space. We got square corners. Took out all the shadowing and anything like that. I put in that right angle or right arrow, and, and that's it. So we just have these two elements sitting one on top of each other. And again, the nice thing here with having the button is the entire thing is clickable. 
whereas up here only the text would be clickable. And so now let's go back into our CSS. Let me scroll this up to the top so we can see it. And then we'll turn the CSS back on. And in case you're wondering, whoever built this thing probably used custom CSS to make it look like this. Um, that's just the way. That's just the way it is. You eventually, if you want to start doing crazy stuff, you got to start learning some uh, some basic CSS stuff. So what we say here is we're going to take that row, so that one column row we had up here, and we have column inner because what we need to do is we need to get to we need to identify here the parent element that is one level above these two elements we have here. So you have the call inner, and then right inside the call inner, you have the image and the uh, and the button. And let me uh, just show you that as long as we're talking about it. So we have the two of them right here. So if we, well, here's the, here's the image. And then we have the wrapper, and every single element will have it'll have like a wrapper part and then it'll have the inner part of it. So if we were doing this text element up here, it would have like a text wrapper and then it would have the text itself. So right outside of that though, so we have the wrapper for the image and we have the wrapper for the button down here. Right outside of that here is our call inner. So that's what we want to target right there is that call inner. Because what we want to do is we want to tell it that everything inside of it, we want to display flex. It's also known as Flexbox. So we just take that out. And what it's going to do is it's going to slap these two on the same line next to each other. So now they're on the same line next to each other. And uh, I'm not going to scroll up because we're going to take care of that in a minute. Because now what we're going to say is we want to justify this center. And so justify content justifies it left to right. So we're going to justify this in the center left to right. So it puts it into the center. And then we want to justify it in the row, top to bottom, so we don't have to worry about putting in any kind of top margin or anything else. It finds the center for us, whereas up on the top here, we had the text element. We had to put in a 100 top margin just to get it down into the center, okay? Another thing that's nice about Flex here on mobile it's going to stay looking exactly the same if that's what you wanted on mobile. It's going to look exactly the same. And then what we're going to have to do here still is we still have to move this over to the left and we still have to put it behind the image. So I just started playing with the left margin. And so I came up with margin left of minus 40. You see it's just over the edge of the book there. And then we will come down here. We'll give it the Z index of minus one. If it works, there we go. And so now we put it behind and you can see a little bit of that shadow over the button. So I think that is the simplest way to do this. Now, the thing that I found interesting is when you click on this button, what pops up is you have this diagonal coming across the screen like this. And I find the best way to do it. They used, uh, they actually used, um, they had to use a translate function, but then they also rotated it 10 degrees. So let's just change here the rotation on this and you'll see what happens as I bring that rotation down, it's going to straighten out. Well, I found that that doing the rotate like that works, but it just gets a little funky sometimes. And then if I'm not mistaken, when you do that, you then have to unrotate this section here. But what I found an easier way to do it is to actually use what is known as a clip path polygon, <clears throat> excuse me, clip path polygon. And so that's what I did below it here. You can see this gray box and you can see the angle on it. So you, you build out these uh, clip paths and you just say, okay, this is the shape that I want this thing to be. And basically it says, go over to 100% and then down 25%. So we're going to go 100% to the right over here and we're going to come down 25%. And then, so that's going to be our first point. Our second point is going to be over here at 100, 100. And then we're going to come all the way back over here to the left at zero and up 25% to give us 75. And then the last one will be at zero, zero. So if we wanted to change this, we could simply go here. Let's just say we want to make this 35 then, and then we'll make this one 65. And that'll give us more of an angle. And of course, you can come in here and set padding and give it more of a height if you want. Or you can set the height right in here, I do believe. Let me just put it in here. H-A-G-H-T of, let's just say, 500 pixels. And so there, it made the height 
much bigger. Let's just make this uh, 800 pixels, and you can see it just got bigger again. So you can make that you can make that polygon any height that you want, and then you just have to make sure you center your content in the middle of it. So there's a little bonus for you. If you got any questions, let me know.